Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy here with Whimsy Stamps. Thanks for joining me again today. We are going to be making a death moth kind of Halloween inspired wall decor piece. In fact, we're going to make two. Now I'm showing you pretty much all the products on screen that I'll be using. There will be a few others that I add and a few that I may subtract, but I will have everything linked and listed downstairs in the description box as usual but you can see that I took the death moth stamp from the exquisite stamp set and I stamped it out several times I have heat embossed it and this is just on Nina 110 it's not on watercolor paper because I wasn't sure when I stamped them out exactly what I was going to do I wish I had used watercolor card but I didn't and so we just make the best of it we just roll with it so I have five different sets of Lindy's Magicals and I have poked little holes in the little foamy thing on the top, the seal, and um, I just use them as sprinkles. Um, I don't do that until after this part. <laughs> I use way, way too much of the magicals on this part of it because I was just trying to spoon it out because these particular magicals are not in sprinkle containers. Um, but anyway, I remedy that as we move forward and um, made the best of that that I could. I will be coming back and revisiting that and trying to um, trying to tweak it a little bit. But in the meantime, while those are set aside drying, I am taking the new Harlequin stencil, which I absolutely love, and I've got some um, crackle paste, and I'm just spreading it liberally over these two, liberally and randomly, <laughs> over these two um, canvas panels from Arteza. One is 6x6, six six. this this one is 6x6, six six. the other is 5x7, and I'm just laying down the the texture paste so that it, it gives us some texture. And we'll go, go back to that after it's all dry, but in the meantime, these are fully dry, and I fussy cut out all six of them. Now, if you don't like fussy cutting, <laughs> I apologize. To be honest, I don't know if there are dies with this set. I feel like there are coordinating dies. I don't have them. Um, if there are, I'll link and list them, okay? Um, if they're not and you want to, you know, case this or do something similar, unfortunately, you'll have to fussy cut. <laughs> <laughs> if the dies are not available and if you don't have them but um, if you have a scan and cut or anything like that you know obviously that's an option as well for me fussy cutting is um, something that I enjoy it's kind of therapeutic to me I don't know why but anyway there I was trying to lift up some of that color and I was just spraying it reactivating that color and it didn't take a lot to reactivate it because there's so much of it and yeah I just kind of dabbed it up and set it aside to dry again and here is where I am using my pokey tool and just making sprinkle tops I did have to go back a couple times on some of them and make the, the little holes a little bit bigger now on this panel I wanted it to be black and gray <laughs> but I forget that these pigments separate out into different colors so my black and gray panel isn't so much black and gray. It's it's very pretty. I love it, but it's not black and gray. So I'm coming back in with just some more. I actually have three different colors. Um, let me see if I can find them. One of them is not in that container. <laughs> okay, Canadian Bacon Blush. And I think that's where the pinks are coming from is in that one. It's kind of dark, but... Um, yeah, where's my fifth one? And I also have Scream and Banshee Black, which that's probably the best black. And then I have Hockey Puck Black as well. So those are the three that are on the right. I do come in and I add some Polite People Purple <laughs> to that panel just to kind of pull out some of those purples. I'm like, if you can't beat it, you know, roll with it. So... And then on the left hand side I have Top Hat Teal, Apothecary Azure, and Tainted Love Teal. I just thought that these particular colors would be a really good contrast for the yellows, oranges, and reds of the moths. So I just, yeah, that, that was my thought process. 
Now with the teal one, there was a lot of green in the teals when it separated out, so I, I rolled with that as well, and I added some peaky, pinky franken lime. <laughs> That's why there's more green in there. Now here you can see I've got a little bit more black going on until I kind of wipe it off. And I don't wipe it off per se. I, I dab a little bit and then I kind of just roll it off because these these panels, um, they're not waterproof and I didn't want the water to soak all the way through. So you can see how the darker hues have soaked into the, um, the paste of the Harlequin stencil and I'm going back after they're completely dry. Now I let them sit overnight to completely dry but I wanted there to be some contrast so I'm coming in with my stamps, the stamps that I showed in the beginning. I have the wall, vintage wallpaper and I have some of the lace trims from one of the exquisite sets and then of course I have the vintage script and I am stamping all of those onto both panels with Versamark and then I'm heat embossing in white embossing powder. Now to be fair I actually did this before I put on the um, the texture paste but once I did it you couldn't see the texture paste or you couldn't see the embossing at all. So I did it on top, I did it a second time but I just you know wanted to be honest about what my process was. I just didn't want to bore you with it because this is three hours worth of footage just the footage not the drying time and everything and I finally have it um, edited down to about 11-12 minutes something like that so I did not want to put that part in when it was completely moot to the overall project but I did the heat embossing on both panels and now I go going around the edges with my Versamark as well as with the white embossing powder and I feel like this really frames it and brings it all home I love it I thought I might go in with some gold as well around the edges like I do with the with what I call the grungy elegant <coughs> excuse me but I feel like this gives it that same look but it kind of blends more now all of the magicals are very very sparkly they've got beautiful gold mica in all of them I think and um, so there's already a gold factor going on and then I do come in with some gold watercolor pigment from Brutus Monroe it's called Gilded and I splatter that on here in a little bit too but this is where both panels are at right now and I love 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 the contrast of the white around the edges and the different stamping um, images on there they're very subtle but I think they make a big difference and so still trying to lighten up these moths I come in with my Posca pen and just just splatter 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 and then I thought well if I went around the edges of the panels with white let me go around each of the moths with white as well and that does perk them up a little bit it helps them to stand out a little bit in the end you don't see it to be fair you don't like I'm, I'm looking at the panels right now and you just don't see it but I also wanted there to be some more black on the panels especially the, the left one and so I just came in again with the black Posca pen and then I thought hmm Posca is pretty powerful powerful um, medium if you will so I just took my paintbrush and dipped it in some of the Posca paint and dabbed it on and then I sprayed it and you can see I don't have a whole lot of pigment on my brush and it is just blooming on that panel now I do move it around and I dab some off a little bit and then of course in that process I lost some of that white contrast that I was loving so much. So I have my brayer and I have some, um, I'm using actually the white Posca pen and just kind of dabbing it out on my glass board and just picking it up with my um, brayer and rolling it on and just hitting some of those higher surfaces. Now I have to say my phone that I record with died and I did not know it. So here is where I'm adding the splatter of the pigment and I'm also adding some more of the white splatter with the um, Posca pen. But after this I lost the footage which is not that big of a deal because from this part all I did was mounted the um, the death moths. I just put, put them up on some double sided foam tape and then I added a sentiment 
These are actually from Ideology. I couldn't find what I wanted. And since these are going to be, you know, displayed in my craft room, I thought I'm going to put on them what I want to put on them. And I thought these were perfect. It says, with brave wings, she flies. And of course, this one says, use your wings and follow your heart. I think those sentiments are great. I love them. I love the grungy aspect of these. They're not full on Halloween, but they have kind of that... Um, I guess dark academia vibe again if you will but y'all this is this is what I have for us this week let me know what you think this was a long and drawn out process for me but I so enjoyed it and I hope that you did as well if you have questions comments all that kind of thing drop it downstairs you know I love to con or communicate with you down there and like subscribe comment all those things and in the meantime this is Nancy the handy scandy and I'll be back soon until then Mwah. I'm out.